Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to analyze and perform one of the etudes that can be found in my Killer Jazz Vibes book. If you haven't checked it out, please do so. The link is down in the description. This etude is based on Thelonious Monk's composition, Blue Monk, which is a slow blues, very simple form with a 5-4-1 structure in the key of B flat. So I'll play the etude and then I'll go back and break down each phrase so that you can see how it relates to the chords. Here we go. Two, three, four. So the first phrase is nothing but a B-flat 7 arpeggio with a chromatic approach tone to the third. Then when the chord changes to E-flat 7, I simply change the D, which was the third on the B-flat 7, to a D-flat, which is now the seventh on the E-flat 7. Then in the next bar, I just changed it back and then played around a little bit more on the top side of that shape. Then we have a superimposition of a 2-5-1. Normally it's just B flat 7. I've decided to arpeggiate an F minor 9 and then use an enclosure to get to the fifth on that B flat 7 chord in the second half of that bar. And it has a double time feel as well. So you have to switch your thinking from Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it to one, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. So that phrase is an F minor nine chord with a chromatic approach to the root. Chromatic approach, one, three, five, seven, nine. Then a chromatic enclosure, which is now five, four, three, two, one, seven, five on the B flat seven. This D flat is already anticipating the E flat seven in the next bar, so that's the seventh. And uh, you'll notice I came out on my right mallet there, so I kind of did this awkward. You can use some different sticking if you want to in that spot. But that is now the E flat seven. Again, a grace note to the third. We go five up to the six. And then you have to really think two, three, and a four, e, and a one to get this next phrase, which is based off a B flat blues scale, basically. One, two, three, and a four, e, and a one. And the eighth notes on the downbeat of the next bar, you can immediately switch back to swing if you like. So that means the subdivision goes one, e, and a two, e, and a three, e, and a four, e, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a so you can go right back to triplets there. One, two, three, and a four, e, and a da, da, da. That phrase basically uses a B-flat major pentatonic, and there's a couple of chromatic passing tones in there. Right there is one, and here's another one. So going three chromatically up to the five, and then chromatically down from the root to the seventh. That's basically a B-flat dominant seventh in third inversion. Then on the F7, we have this F major six shape, but I've added a chromatic passing tone here, and then I spread it up over two octaves up to the top F here. Now that one, the sticking is gonna switch around. If you start here with the left, then here with the right. And after that, it comes down an F7 arpeggio. And then in the next bar, there's no official chord change, but I've actually superimposed an E flat seven type shape, even though the F7 chord is still ringing. The shape is basically this. 
And if you see that E flat seven in first inversion is in there, but the F seven chord is still ringing. So the way that functions, this is the nine, this is the 11, five, the flat 13 and the seven. But it also has one of those double meanings because this part of it also connects directly into the B flat blues scale, which is where the rest of that phrase actually goes. So the whole line goes like this. And then the last phrase, again, it's sort of still playing off that same shape with this. Looks like an E flat seven, but we're really sounding an F seven chord. So you get some different tension out of those tones. Slow swing and ballads and slower tempos like this are actually very difficult to really make them come alive. And that's why this etude is a great way to develop that skill. There are triplets. Do, 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 do. There are swing eighth notes. Do, 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 do. Then there's double time swing over the top of it as well. There's that nuance, but that's why this etude, yes, it's only one chorus long. It's not that technically difficult, but the rhythmic variations that are tied within it are really, really helpful. And the more nuance you can play this with, the more expressive your playing is going to be generally. And uh, yeah, that's it. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.